ready. Hey, boys and girls, welcome back to Monroe Live. Um, today um, is kind of like an update for me. I've been traveling a lot. Uh, lots been happening um, here at Monroe, and I'm going to get some updates from Corey. We're also going to talk about some of the last things here that we've noted um, as we've gone through this uh, through this battery pack. Um, I'm going to put my gloves on in a second, uh, but first um, I want to uh, I want to offer. This is the very first uh, 4680 that came out of the pack. So we called it uh, 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 Baby Ilana. And uh, this is what I showed at the Tesla Takeover out in California. And I'm going to uh, donate this to the one who gives us the most, of money, uh, most amount of money to my niece who's um, uh, got leukemia. Uh, it's really expensive. This is her second bout. Um, she's fighting it again. Uh, she's very young. Um, we're going to show you a little picture of her. Anyway, I want you to go to the GoFundMe page if you want this. And uh, the guy that, or the gal that gives us the highest donation by September 30 um, is going to be getting this. It comes in uh, with a little certificate saying it's the first one out there. And it's signed comes in a little bag and it comes in a little box so that uh, so that you you know you've got the very first one so um, I wanted to do something uh, the family's been helping out and the friends and whatnot but this will uh, hopefully get them a few bucks to tie them over just to put things into perspective the backpack that um, <clears throat> that Megan has to wear uh, costs 30 grand <clears throat> um, and that's she's on a new style of uh, a new style of uh, uh, chemotherapy or something, and um, this glove don't work. There we go. And uh, so anyway, like I said, if you want to have something special and you want to donate, uh, the little information will be coming uh, coming out below here. So anyway, let's jump into this. And the first thing I want to do is something that uh, just makes me happy and proud. I'm looking at how the how the bus bars here are welded in and the connecting method and whatnot, and I cannot believe that uh, that we came so close. We all we did was little little uh, wires or sorry, little strings and whatnot. But yeah. this looks so, Sandy. This is very close to what we said. We thought there would be ten in parallel. Uh, there's nine. So, and then they're a little bit staggered. We had ours in a perfect row. Yeah. That's a little bit different. But one thing that Antonio pointed out in another video was that these collector plates, you call them bus yeah. bars, same thing. They're connected directly to the cell. On the, on the other 2170 packs, uh, you have the little wire bonds that right. go from the collector plates to the positive <clears throat> and the negative of yeah. the batteries. This is collector plate directly to the cell, which reduces the number of parts if you consider each wire bond being a separate part. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, I like this a whole lot better because <clears throat> wire bonding and whatnot um, is a hit and miss kind of a thing. Plus, you're looking at a little teeny tiny wire. This has got a lot more voltage, like what, three times as much? Two times as much same voltage. voltage. This is, no, this is three volts, three and a half volts. It's the same. It's a chemistry. All right, fine. Well, anyway. Right, um, Antonio? Chemistry remains the same. All right, good enough. But here, what we're looking at is a, a giant opportunity for welding versus the little teeny wire bonds that, <clears throat> I don't know. Um, I like this a whole lot better. Let's just put it that way. Well, it's the energy that's different. Yeah. The energy in here is three times greater or there something. There you go, yes. Okay, sorry, I used the wrong term. All the right. other thing I noticed is, um, these trays, I really like this. I, I, I saw them before, but now I like them even better because if we look right here, <clears throat> let me put that over there. If we look right here, we see a little bump. Now that bump is, um, is uh, right here. And basically what you do with that little bump is you fill it up with adhesive <clears throat> and then you can't get this up. Now the rest of it's loose, but this is for locating but you're, these would be classified, um, if we were looking at the BMW i3, <clears throat> these would be classified as an onset. So I take that, push it down in the right place. It probably breaks a little bubble and turns it into, uh, 
uh, a locating feature. Uh, that little bubble would be adhesive in your side there. But okay, it was just gonna go to that. The next thing I wanna talk about is fasteners. At Monroe & Associates, we have a really detailed software <laughs> which we analyze all of our products called Design Profit. And in there, we have an extensive amount of symbols to, to cover threaded fastener operations. And in this entire pack, uh, excluding the penthouse area, we only found four little fasteners on a subassembly right here, which we did not need to remove to get this out. And then there's four of these. So 16 total fasteners. They're all common, and these could easily be removed. Uh, if, if you either glue it sonic, on or sonic oh, oh, weld it, yeah, uh, this is a little vent uh, for the, the box that protects the BMS board. And now we're going to talk about the BMS board. Uh, there's two of them. You have an odd and an even. They're different colors. If you get close enough there, Eric, you can see the word even. And you see the word odd in the same spot right there. Now these boards are the ones that are at the end of each of the four modules. Here is the interface to the wire that goes down the length of the battery. This is different than the Model 3 and the Model Y. The Model 3 and the Y had the wires directly bonded to the board. This now has a connector to interface with uh, the BMS board. Tesla is also really good about labeling stuff you see YSB BMB. So this is Y, Model Y, Structural Battery Pack, Battery Management Board. That's our assumption as to what it means. And our team is gonna carefully analyze this, but these are very, very heavily populated boards. And on the BMS boards from the Model 3 and the Model Y, they started out as a, as a square, square yeah. and they were heavily populated. Then they became less and less <clears throat> populated. I believe that this is a uh, better utilization of board space than mm. we had on the Model 3 and the Model Y, but our team is gonna dig into this and, uh, and let us know the full cost. You know, one of the things that I, I like about this is um, that they are different colors, and they pick colors that um, a lot of men are um, red-green colorblind. Now, if you're colorblind, this looks different than that, whereas if it was red and green, then uh, they would look pretty much the same to a color guy, a color blind person, color blind person. So I'm really excited that they've done what they've done. This this is kind of cool as well, um, in that um, in that it shows that Tesla is really looking at polka yoke. Okay, so uh, this is I mean uh, Shingo Shinko would be really happy if he was still alive to see the way that uh, Tesla's done what they've done here with these, uh, with every one of the parts, you can't, you can't screw it up. I, uh, I'm really, really thrilled with that. And Tesla's really good about making large sub-assemblies that don't have any threaded fasteners. So I believe this was broken when we, uh, we took this out, but you notice that each of these joints does not have a, a worm clamp. They don't even have constant, tension spring clamps. And many of the connectors, I think almost all of the connectors are snap in place. Yeah. And beyond just the thermal system, you have the vent on the edge. Here, hold that, Sandy. Yeah. Many of these vents on other battery packs we've seen have one, two, three, four threaded fasteners securing them in, just a snap fit. And not only is this a snap fit, it's pokey okay. It can only be put in one way based on the shape. And the the tiny little uh, what do you call that? It's a Gore-Tex. It's a oh, Gore. Uh, it's a Gore-Tex patch yeah. right there. That is also snap in place. Um, so the elimination of fasteners is great because now you don't have the tools, you don't have the torque monitoring. Sandy, I know you're. That's you've been making yeah, your I mean, career off that. Yeah, I exactly right. Um, my whole career basically at Ford shot to the moon when I uh, did the study on sealing and fastening and found out that our biggest enemy. Was, uh, was threaded fasteners. When it came to uh, things that went wrong, uh, we almost always could go and point at a threaded fastener as, as being the problem. If you can get to a snap fit or a press fit, um, you're, you're better off because first off, you don't need any tools. And secondly, uh, they last forever. A snap fit will last forever. Whereas screws, 
are inherently, they're really called a threaded unfastening tool. And by the way, did you notice that the crickets even listen to Monroe Life? I yeah. Mean, I was going to say a joke. It's like when you talk, you never hear crickets. Yeah, well, obviously this guy's applauding. So anyways, let's keep moving. Let's go down here to the uh, pass-through, uh, which I think is a, is a good idea as well. So this is a, an aluminum, uh, an aluminum die casting. I'm trying yeah, to look for is. the material. A380, it's in cavity number two. I believe the seal is, is it glued That's going to be vulcanized oh, no, in place. No, it's molded in place. It's vulcanized yeah. in place. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. This, I noticed that right away. So at Ford, again, a long time ago, I tried to bring this and, and use this kind of technology on the, um, on the rocker covers. It took quite a while, but they actually went for it. Ford was the first one, and we got rid of a ton of leaks. This cost about, I don't know, it cost us a little bit more at Ford, but our leaks went down, and so consequently our maintenance went down. And, and basically what we heard from the, uh, from the dealerships was, hey, uh, we're not making hardly any money on these, uh, on these rocker covers anymore. What did you do? And actually what we, some people were worried, well, you can't replace them. Well, we took this and shoved it into a scrap bin uh, and chopped it all up, put it back on, and guess what? It still, it still kept, uh, kept the rocker covers from, from, uh, from leaking. So this is really brilliant. I'm, I, I haven't seen too much of that going on anymore, but that's, that's really a, that's a cool idea that works really, really well. If you want to seal, vulcanized in place is a good way to do it. Yeah. What else? So this has been an arduous journey for our team. We wanted to be really careful about how we disassembled this. Um, I know a lot of our viewers said, why didn't you just buy the nasty chemical that dissolves it? Well, there was a bunch of other after effects we didn't want with that chemical. So choosing the dry ice blaster was a, a more methodical yeah. way for yeah. us to, to remove the pink stuff. Right. Well, um, we, we, we did a couple of them. We bought a big jar, which we're not going to use. I'm not a big fan of chemicals. And, um, and in essence, it turned the pink stuff into uh, some, something watermelon. akin to watermelon, old watermelon. And uh, it would have maybe uh, got through a little faster, but um, I, uh, I'm not a fan. So we use the mechanical method and it, it's worked just fine. Yeah. Uh, one last thing. Our team is very quickly working on a report for not only this battery pack, but for the whole 2022 Model Y. So if you're out there and you're in the engineering world and you're like, man, I'd really like to know what this thing costs. I'd like to know every material, the thickness of things, um, the layout of the packs. Why spend $70,000 on a car and then several hundred thousand dollars more for your organization to analyze it when we already have it done? So just send us an email at sales at leandesign.com and we can fast track your organization's um, learning, learning experience. Yeah, there you yeah. go. So. Um, I will tell you that it's not several hundred thousands because we've already heard from several of the OEMs. It costs about $1,200,000 plus the cost of the car to do things internally. At Monroe, um, we're better. We're better. We, we can get it done for about uh, 780000 However, um, uh, and that's with costing and everything else. However, I think that a lot of people think, oh, that's a lot of money, but and at the end of the day, this is cheap for the amount of information you're gonna get. And the other thing we should mention is, we're actually gonna redo the old Model Y. Um, the, uh, the old Model Y was done in 2020 and there's been a lot of changes in material costs, labor rates, and things like that. So we're gonna try and uh, level set this so that if you wanted to, you could see for the additional money. Here's the old Model Y Here's the new Model Y with the 21, sorry, with the uh, 4680 batteries, and you can see where the differences lie. And so we're gonna come up with that. We're gonna try and do stuff that people really and truly need and want. So we're gonna do battery cost differential between LG pouch, um, 2170s, 4680s, and whatever else we can get our hands on so that people can see what the differential is in the amount of cost associated with something the size of the 4680s versus all the other types of batteries that are out there. Yeah. And at Monroe, we're not selling you an ocean of data. We're actually catching the fish, cleaning it for you, and serving you dinner.
Yeah, so exactly. it's yeah. a little faster way to get what you want. Yeah. So um, with that, I think we're, yeah. we're good. So anyways, um, continue please to watch uh, Monroe Live. And if you have a mind and you want to make Corey happy, subscribe. And, um, and we'll be talking to you soon with uh, more of what we find here on the, uh, on the new Tesla Model Y, the 22 Model Y. Thanks so much for watching. Bye now. Keep filming. Just stand here while the cricket chirps and just look at him. Just look in the corner. Or just, just, just stand there. <laughs> oh, stand here and look at him while it chirps. <laughs> Don't smile. Okay. Mm. <laughs> I can't do it. You're gonna I have to find somebody that, else. I wanted that for Twitter. <laughs> okay, good. You can do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>